Hello and welcome to Troubleshooters, where for the next 15 minutes or so we'll be offering some advice to those of you who've written or emailed us with problems related to IT in your professional life. As always, we've a pretty mixed bag of questions and to help answer them, I'm joined by two experts in the field. First, we have Francis West of FW Computer Systems, an IT solutions provider based in Middlesex. Good evening, Francis. Good evening. And also joining us, we have Bill Boyle, editor of the trade magazine PC Dealer. Welcome, Bill. Hi, right, Peter. Our first question today comes via email from Bill Evans, who's having a spot of bother with his server. Bill writes to us, uh, we have a, a Novell 4.0 server in our organization. Currently have 32 megabytes of RAM installed. Recently we upgraded the memory to 128 megabytes of RAM, but the server is still only seeing 64 megabytes of RAM. How do I fix this problem, Francis? It's a very interesting common problem, actually, because, um, first of all, before I answer the question, I'd like to... to to mention one thing, and that, that's the golden rule of Novell servers. For every one gig of hard disk space that you're using, you should have at least 10 meg of RAM. So to boot up, you need 16. So if you imagine you've got a one gig, you really need 26 and then 10 um, megabyte RAM per gig. Now for the question, wh what happens when you, when you upgrade um, over 64? You need to change a few things or look out for a few things. The first one is to look in your config sys file. Um, and in there, you, you tend to want what you're going to do is find a, a, a line entered in there called um, device equals to highmem.sys. So what's happening? The, the computer is actually grabbing the memory and not releasing it to the Novell operating system. So remove that line completely. And that definitely is going to solve your, question, uh, your, your problem. If not, your second and last thing that's um, going to solve your problem for you is to go on to the Novell website, www.novell.com go into the software and patches section and download the latest update for Novell 4.0 and that will update your server.exe which will clear this problem. Okay, Bill, I, I hope that's uh, all clear so you get down there to the Novell um, website, I think. <laughs> I understood Novell. the word web, but that was about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, our next question is from John Langdon in Camden Town. John runs a small music shop specializing in old, video, uh, old vinyl recordings. And he'd like to get the business online, but he's concerned about the security issues of credit card purchases over the net. Uh, now, his friend, who he says is a certified geek, tells him <laughs> it's impossible to get a totally secure system. Is he right, and should he trust a certified geek? Bill. What's a completely secure system when you use credit cards full stop? And that's, the, that's where I'd start. I mean, I think you have to look at the Internet as, uh, in this respect as a whole load of people connected together and people are just as likely to rip you off as the internet isn't the internet that rips you off it's um it's, un, uh, it's uh, people at the end of the day um i would say just be careful if you go if you put if you put up a website you can put up a secure system um that will allow people to buy and uh, buy stuff from you um wherever you give your credit card number to anyone then there's always a, a possibility of abuse um you can buy fairly safely over the net um, as long as it tells you when you when you actually hit the button before you hit the button that this is a, secu a secure site most sites I would say uh, of all the big retail sites so if you're buying from the states but it's very popular for people to buy books from the states for example amazon.com is a fairly secure site to buy from um, because it tells you uh, you know this is secure if it says if you have any worries about buying then don't okay Francis how do you, how do you stand on on, on web security uh, Exactly the same. I mean, there, there is a website that actually um, rates these websites that you can buy from. Unfortunately, I do not know the web address off the top of my head. But if you do a search on AltVista or um, Yahoo.com, have a look for credit card ratings. Mm -hmm. Do type that in and have a look and see if that site actually exists on this vetted site. And if it, if it is, then you'll buy with more confidence. But it's like Bill said, you know, it's a chance you take. It's 95% or 99% foolproof, but there's always the 1%. I mean, Bill, have there, have there been uh, large-scale credit card scams on the, on the net, or the problems that have existed, have they tended to be smaller scale and the question of individual abuse of individual cards, for example? It's generally the abuse of individual cards. I can't think of any large-scale scam in UK or Europe. There have been one or two in the States, but even those don't, they, they don't um, come anywhere near the you know the ma the massive fraud of manufacturing of false credit cards uh, that takes place uh, across Europe. So I've not personally heard of any. It's not to say that the, the net is entirely safe. It's not. But as long as you take precautions, it's no more uh, no un more unsafe than anywhere else. Okay. 
Moving on to our next question comes from uh, Ray Wells in Portsmouth. And Ray uh, wrote, writes to us and says, I run a small company that manufactures cutlery. Earlier this year, I took the plunge and started a website, but I've been disappointed at few, how few hits our site has received. Uh, how can I drum up more interest? Francis, this is about marketing on the web, yes. making as much noise as possible That's above it. the rest of the noise on the, on the net. How can, uh, how can Ray do this best? There are many, many ways, and there you'll find thousands and thousands of sites that would tell him that if you pay me, say, 14 or $24, then I will you know, advertise your site to so many different sites. I would start off by um, just, again, doing a search on the Internet for ad advertising your site, and you'll find a lot of different companies that's going to give you that service. But a lot of companies also gives you... Um, a limited service in the sense that you can start by advertising your site for free with all the search engines so that's always a good start and it also gives you um, f then they say do this for free and then if you pay this you get another 200 now you know you've got to start somewhere you take one it's not a lot of money it's normally like twenty four dollars or something or it goes up but that's a good start so that's not going to cost you a lot of money start with somebody like that and see what results you're getting and then you know, you, you'll do a lot of reading as well at the same time when you're doing the searching. And, then, and you'll start to understand which is the better ones to, um, to use. Also, ask your internet provider because he will probably give you the best advice. Okay. I mean, Bill, should Ray be looking at putting bells and whistles on his site, uh, graphics and, and animation and all the rest of it? I'd say that's where, that's where I would start. Look at what, what content you're providing because most um, internet users will want to find... They, they will come to a site... Um, and the experience of the internet uh, up to now has been with new sites that people come, they want to browse, they want to chat with other people, they want to find, they want, they want activity, they want something to come to, some content they can, uh, they, they, they can absorb and have good, some good, uh, good fun with. Then I'd suggest um, some very, very some basics, some things that people generally don't do. Any advertising that he does locally, make sure he has the URL very big on that advertising. Um, and also try and get, if, he use, if he's got contacts with some of the, his suppliers, see if they want to advertise on the site. As much content, as much of interest as possible, and that will begin to attract people. It's quite a major issue, this, isn't it? I mean, Absolutely. for, 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 for Absolutely. smaller people on the web, like Ray, um, you know, perhaps looking forward, you can see a situation in which, you know, Ray and, and, and a whole bunch of other people in the cutlery industry are going to, you know, uh, be uh, all gathered at one web mm. portal um, so that people who are interested in cutlery can... <laughs> can go to that place and, and find Ray. Uh, it, is, is that starting to happen in any way, Francis, that you can see that kind of content aggregation on the web? No, no, I wouldn't say. It's all so widely spread that uh, it's free for all at the moment, you know, completely. There's so many different e-commerce e shopping centers, you know, springing up, and a lot of them are failing. And um, I think the best way, if you're a one-man band, you just have to start off you know, slowly and try different things. Again, I wouldn't load too many graphics and things onto your website because you want people to find you. That's one thing. But once they've found you, you want to get the page to be displayed very quickly. Okay. Our next question uh, uh, concerns networks and comes from Lawrence via email. Uh, Lawrence writes, uh, my company network has eight desktop PCs and three laptops. One has Windows 98, while most have Windows 95, and two still have Windows 3.11 with DOS. Now, I'm planning on investing in a new network next year, but I don't know if I should risk getting NT5 as soon as it comes out or stick with NT4. Advice, please. The great NT debate, Bill. Uh, where, uh, where do you come down on this? Stick with NT4 is my advice for the moment. Um, I think if you look at the people who are having problems with Windows 98, not major problems, but uh, conflict problems, little bugs here and there that creep in. Um, uh, backward compatibility is something that I would worry about in terms of uh, some of the, the Microsoft products. Suddenly I've had problems with that PowerPoint, for example. Um, it's very embarrassing to go up to use a PowerPoint presentation and find out that you're just one version ahead of the, the 3,000 people you're about to present to and you have nothing. Um, I'd also say Microsoft aren't early adopters. Beware of catching the early adopter bug and doing it just for the sake of it. If you've got a system that works, works well, keep with it. Look around for a few months. It's not entirely essential unless you have a speed problem, unless you, you, you really do have to upgrade. I'd be very careful. Okay, so, so, so for, for you, Bill, it's a question of sticking with those 3,000 other guys. Francis? 100% uh, uh, behind Bill. Right. 100%. Um, I wouldn't touch, I'm very inclined to say 98 or, or NT5. I've had experience with 98 for quite some time now, and um, 
especially the upgrades. Yeah. Don't even think of doing an upgrade. Wipe your machine completely clean and then do your upgrade. But even then, you're going to struggle. Yeah. Um, it's just like 95. You would think Microsoft wouldn't have done this to us a second time, but it's happening again. Okay, exactly Bill, again. Bill, how, how are Microsoft doing with the, the, the release schedule for NT5? Is there, are there confirmed dates uh, yet? Nothing confirmed that I know. No, no. I mean, um, the last we had were, with the due date was a couple of months ago. Um, I would be surprised if before the end of the year, um, probably beginning of next year. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, our final question comes from uh, Jez Tomset in uh, Muswell Hill. I'm a multimedia producer, says Jez, and I'm considering publishing on DVD as well as CD-ROM. Uh, what authoring package can I use, and is moving to DVD a good idea? Francis. Yes, DVD. simply because um, the storage cap uh, ca capabilities that DVD has, digital video discs, uh, you can store 10, 10 gig and greater on one single CD, whereas we were limited to 680 meg uh, per CD at the moment although even with rewritable a thousand times, you're still never going to get to the same capacity. Uh, as far as the packages are concerned, I mean, most or all of the um, manufacturers of the DVDs nowadays will package their, their, their the recorder, the DVD recorder, with some type of software. Uh, Adaptec is my favorite. They always come with a um, package that's going to help him produce these um, CDs or the DVD discs. Okay. Uh, there's many others on the market, so but start with with, with Adaptic. They're good. Okay. I mean, Bill, with all all of this capacity, I mean, it surely calls forth the question: Who's going to provide the content to to use all of this uh, all of this space on DVD? Good point. But I think you'll find that um, media houses, uh, publishers, uh, multimedia users, television companies will uh, will jump at the chance to be able to. Um, run applications, for the large applications, and then transfer files, which is a, you know, may seem quite a simple ABC type of thing to have to do. Well, it is. But uh, if you have uh, you know, multimedia applications, um, well, film clips and um, sound and vision, um, even a, a, a PowerPoint presentation, for example, uh, if you load all of that stuff in, which I've done as well and crashed many computers, um, you do need that this stuff will be a boon to people who really are heavy users and that's the, uh, the heavy users will be the multimedia uh, people who uh, it's amazing actually that this hasn't come along before now to be honest so 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 the, so the heavy users the multimedia companies etc but for consumers is this, is this technology going to come uh, take off uh, dvd is it going to be the cd rom of the future for, for well consumers? if you talk to panasonic or hitachi then yes they're betting the business on it and there are some people who are um, are seeing the uh, are predicting the end of video, for example, video cassettes uh, within a year to two years. Uh, okay. That won't c wipe out the whole of retail, but it will certainly have a huge impact. The DVD will have a massive impact on mass storage, without a doubt. Okay, thank you, Bill. Well, we've run out of time for this session of Troubleshooters. I hope it proved useful to those of you who wrote in. And do remember, if you have an IT problem in your business, we're here to help and uh, we're a lot cheaper than your average consultant. I'd like to finish now by thanking my guests for taking the time to be with us. Thank you, Francis and Bill. And thank you, the viewers. I'm Peter Kerwin. Join me next time for more Troubleshooters. Good night.